Hey, hey, my name is Corey. I'm here to say we put you in tears because we podcast every day. Listen to me as I say these words. We're going to kill it every single day. Hey, my name is Sam and I'm here to say I like to podcast in a fun way. I've got my friends on my right and their names are Corey and Paco. All right. Take over the beatbox, Sam. Oh. <laughs> this is Paco. Hey, hey, I don't hey, know what uh, to do. I have no idea, but I'm going back to you. Oh, hey, it's me. And guess what, guys? We're live because it's Maximum Driftcast. The only Driftcast where we're actually not cats. That was a joke. It was April Fool's, you dummies. God, I, I can't, can't believe, believe it. People, audience, Our audience is so gullible. Yeah. Like, seriously, guys. Did you like you're losing at the internet just because we posted a picture of us as cats and we said dra- maximum drift cats it doesn't mean we're actually cats like it's <laughs> so simple it's real simple guys guys just do, do your research before posting stuff you think know? before you talk either. yeah well i got two messages saying oh my god what happened to you and i responded back yeah yeah and smashed the keyboard yeah. and then my mom called like, and asked like, me what happened to me like this. yeah she was like ah, yeah my mom like called me cat. she's like you oh got my a god. real stupid mom hey do you know what she was concerned about us she didn't give a shit about you though she has some pacos all right yeah, I, I I got home and I was about to make me a sandwich or something. Instead, I, I started a cat making, sandwich. I started making kitty biscuits, and everybody was like, <laughs> "Paco, it? came back, come what back to a, you." What is a kitty biscuit? A kitty biscuit. You know what the kitty biscuits? No, I don't know what that is. Uh, it's kind of like an inside joke. I'll tell you later. Is it a sex joke? <laughs> Actually, no. It's a it's a pretty cute thing. Isn't that where you get Chex Mix and peanut butter together and you put it in a bowl and eat it? Yeah, that's that's ants on a log. <laughs> that's ants on. <laughs> what uh, <sighs> what uh, what's going on with your lives? I want to know all about them. Well. Uh, let's start with Corey. I'll, I'll start what, it up. Tell us uh, what I did this week. God, this week is actually not that fun for me, guys, because <laughs> uh, I was kind of sick a little bit. I wasn't feeling. I was feeling a little under the weather. Uh, actually, pretty pretty heavily, and I started to. Uh, I I got so sick I webbed and did it to kind of figure out. So you got out. brain tumors. So I had, <laughs> well, it said I had you this got thing. Parasites. That, it's uh, I had this thing called Rumble in the Bronx. <laughs> Rumble still skin? <laughs> rumble in the Bronx. That means where your stomach starts. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, WebMD says I got rumble in the Bronx. I think that's all the spaghetti that's just sloshing around in there. <laughs> all the spaghetti and whole it milk. It says the only cure is like four somersaults and a cartwheel. Well, the issue, Corey, is that, that when wasn't you... was the brown fever. <laughs> yeah. when, you, when you eat your big bowl of spaghetti, because that's how you order it, he goes to the restaurant and like, I'd like one big bowl of spaghetti, please. Stat. And then and then he always he drinks like almost a half gallon of 2% milk each time too. Yeah, it, it lubes up the pipes and mm-hmm. shoots it out. Because he doesn't, he doesn't ever do purpose. spaghetti with sauce. It's just no, it's plain. Plain Jane with a little butter on top. Plain Jane, a little butter and a bunch of 2% milk. <laughs> but today, today I started feeling a little bit more alive. I started feeling a little bit Should more Should we be sitting myself. this close to you? Uh, you, know, you know, it's totally fine. I think I had food poisoning. We already got a little taste of that food poisoning yeah, a couple I, minutes yeah. ago. He's been Sorry, poisoning guys. the air in here. I've been uh, <laughs> clearing out. I've been actually fogging for bugs. Okay. Clearing it out so you guys can. I'll, char- I'll, char- I'll, charge you, I'll charge you later for that. Six bucks. <laughs> Thank you. Six bucks a room. That's a, uh, that's a steal. Wow. But uh, so today I, I started feeling a little bit better. And uh, <laughs> I actually went to the, the shop today. I uh, Vibrant Performance sent me a stencil. So I stenciled up the intercooler on the boss today. Mm-hmm. I started uh taking apart the rear subframe because we're uh i'm sending it you're out actually th- going to make the car an actual car now finally? yeah so i'm sending the together. subframe out to ma motorsports and they're gonna uh fab up the uh the quick change for what's, it what's a mama motorsports mama motorsports ma motorsports is the shop out in maryland that uh builds and uh helps facilitate chris forsberg at the racetrack never heard of them yeah they're they've been around for about 12 years so they're still growing okay cool. uh, uh brian wilkerson the legend and then ray Leota. The milkshake. <laughs> Leota. Ray, Leota. Ray the milkshake Leota. <laughs> What's the name of that little youngster? That Dylan. Dylan. He's there a beast. Debo. Yep. We call him the backflipper. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> so today, today was a better day, guys. I'm feeling better. I'll probably have to take a nap in five minutes. I like and, how you uh, say this like anyone gives a shit. Do you know what? I hope I get, I hope I get, get well emails. <laughs> get well soon. Or send cards to Sam's house. Or don't. Yep. So... That was my day, guys, and we really interesting. Thanks for that interesting yeah, car. Shut news. up, nice. Sam Paco. How are you, buddy? Good, good. I'm doing pretty good. I'm st- uh, still struggling with allergies, not like last week. <laughs> this is oh health cast. We're talking about our health. <laughs> shut Jesus up, Sam. Christ. I'm concerned about my friend Paco. Shut the fuck up. Thank you, Paco. Go ahead. Yeah. So I was saying, I'm feeling better with the allergies. <laughs> I got. I got. What did you take? Some Benadryl or some Claritin? How, yeah. Tell me what you did. <laughs> exactly. No, I smell. I smell a lot of like alcohol <laughs> from uh, going to the indie races this weekend. Yeah. So. Uh, Do you know what's going to happen to Sam this week? 
Uh-oh. He's going to get a lot of diarrhea for fucking bashing us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that because I didn't open up a chain letter? So anyways, Paco, yeah. back to you. <laughs> Thank you. Back to you, Paco. <laughs> See how we're reporting live from the... <laughs> So yeah, we well, uh, went to Phoenix International Raceway, which that's a, an amazing track, uh, an amazing local track we used to have for drifting, and now it's all NASCAR. And mm. uh, finally, this year, they decided to add another big race on it, so the this Phoenix Grand Prix is back with the Indy car. Yeah, so this was Indy. And the Indy okay. lights. And so we're pretty much, we had like the, like the biggest, the biggest dogs. How did, the, uh, how did the Penske do the deal? The Penske, actually, the two of our drivers left half the race. To uh, another of the of, of his drivers uh, finished uh, first, I believe. Oh, nice! Uh, I think oh, um, I, I, I should. I, I might be wrong, but I think uh, Jackson. I think he drives for Penske as well. Okay. But anyways, like yeah, Penske was doing pretty good. My boy Montoya, he was doing Shout pretty out. good. Go? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Until did you have a chance to speak with him? <laughs> yeah. What yeah. did you say, Yontera? Yeah, I should say Kionda. Oh, he said Kionda way. Oh, Kionda way, Kionda. Capello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna throw this guy over the wall. Actually, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was hilarious. Anyways, um, it was pretty. It's pretty cool, you know. Indy's back in Phoenix. Hopefully, more sanctioned body. Uh, open wheel. Op- yeah, uh, yeah. Well, especially open wheel. Com- wheel to wheel action. Um, that was pretty badass. And um, also took the van to the dyno, which Whoa. we'll oh, talk yeah. about that. Yeah, uh, you said later. on the social media that you were gonna talk about it on the show. Yeah. But well, later, you've got a special segment. I got a special We're counting out Paco's horsepower. Exactly. One, <laughs> two, three, and we'll be done in under a minute. <laughs> Hi, so my, my name's Sam. I, uh, I've edited all week. Um, oh, oh, uh, um, what else did I do all week? Chewing on my teeth a little bit. <laughs> I drank some beer. <laughs> I had, had some really cold beers. Um, thanks, Paco. Yeah, well, back to you. <laughs> back to you, Paco. I did, I did do all those things. I drank beer and edited, but I also Rode uh, a horse. I ordered a Tesla. Or oh. I put down a reservation for a Tesla Model 3. That's what? Surprise. Yeah. <laughs> surprise, world. <laughs> nice. Awesome. And that's it. That's it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean that's, did you wait that, in that, line? That just means like... No, no, I just like did it online. Uh, so you, you're, you put down a thousand bucks and the money is wait, refundable. What? You put down a thousand bucks that gets you a placeholder in line, essentially, for this car that's going to be made next year or the year after. And uh, hopefully, hopefully... I don't even know if I want it, but I, I figured like it's, it's such a cool idea that I want to support a... a a, a totally electric car that doesn't are, look like dick. Are you a vegan now? No, I don't give a shit about that. I okay. love you. No, I just want to have a car that uh, is is comfortable and quiet after my... After, I'm going to be driving my uh, <laughs> STI to Long Beach tomorrow. So comfort and quiet. I'm never I'm never going to get rid of the STI, but it'd be how's, a good combo to have. How's a, the hauling space in those? You think it's going to be better because, than the... Because uh, the, the entire hood is a trunk and the entire trunk is a trunk. But you yeah. only get 200 miles per charge. Right. So the the base model, they say, is going to get at least 200 miles. But like, if I have to go out of town, I drive the STI. But most of my trips are like to the Yantera or oh, to, right. to the, the taco store. Yeah. The Quinceanera, the yeah. taco store, <laughs> taco whatever. Shop. Are those things rear-wheel drive? Yep. The, the yeah. That's the, other, that's, the other, that's the other part, too, is it could be fun video tool. Like when they're new and cool and everyone likes them, then I could uh, awesome. drift it out of the track. Which I don't know if you guys know, but uh, this weekend, uh, Formula E was running at yeah. Long Beach. Yeah, that's kind of boring. I know, right? You no, I think it's pretty cool. It's so weird that you, you don't hear any motor, but you hear all the straight cut gears <laughs> and the <laughs> transmission. <laughs> yeah. The the tires the tires uh, screeching. And yeah, I'm just thinking about riding with you in your electric car now. It's already has awkward silence in the STI. This is just gonna be super awkward yep. now riding with so you. So here's yeah. the thing, you know, you got yourself a convertible. I got yeah. myself a a Riata. Yep. <laughs> Sam got himself a Tesla. In, two, in so two years, maybe if I can afford one, if I can afford it, like shell out thirty five grand. You already get the down cost. payment if you think yeah. about it. Yeah, whatever. We'll see. Yep. Oh, oh cool, and also man. and also, uh, it's funny about the form of the E. I also shot a video this week with uh, engineering explained guy. Oh, nice, it's Jason. He's a really cool guy. I don't, I don't want to say what we did in the video yet, but it was cool. Was it? Uh, have a YouTube channel or something? Engineer explained. Just engineer. yeah, he's got uh, he's got like six hundred thousand subs, and nice. uh, he explains engineering. He did a video with Vaughn at S- at uh, Formula Drift Seattle last year. I think year. I've seen a couple of his videos. Really nice no, guy. So. Nice. Real, real inspirational to uh, <clears throat> see someone like me who didn't just stop when he got thirty thousand subscribers. He actually <laughs> <laughs> he kept making cool <laughs> shit. Um, nice. What else? Anything else? Oh, and I guess I'm leaving for Long Beach tomorrow, so that's exciting. That's cool, Sam. Formula nice. Drift uh, Long Beach. Long Beach. It seemed like it came up pretty fast, actually. Time does fly when you're when you're editing videos uh, and blogging. You just gonna you just gonna shit on me all the episodes? Is that your plan? I'm sorry that I sorry that I was was not. You, you bashed on Paco. I was not. I was not. I was not health. sympathetic to to Healthcast. You know. Sorry. Uh, sometimes our 
our handful of listeners really want. want well, to know. you gotta do to stay healthy is you gotta eat a lot of red meat and drink a lot of beer. Yeah, that's what I do. Red beer meat, beer meat. Wow. Ah, so what's uh what's going on on the internet? Well, today, I don't know. Guys? Yeah, do you guys have any comments? Any anything you've read on the YouTube's on the Instagram? Well, let's get to let's do let's let's do the fan comment stuff. Fan we'll, mail. We'll get to our uh, fan mail. Get to our other stuff later. So let's see. I I think um. Corey already had a question here. Uh, yeah, I'm going <clears> to <throat> save this one for last yeah. because it's quite lengthy. Um, we got a ton of comments last week, mostly based off of uh, Chris De Jaeger's style. What are we calling it, by the way? Like battle style? Uh, the the B-hole style. B-hole style. Yeah, so we, ta- we talked to uh, Chris Jaeger. Is it De Jaeger? De Jaeger. Chris De Jaeger, Meister Jaeger. And he, yeah. uh, he has the new alternative qualifying and competition format that they're trying out around the world and pro-am leagues everywhere. And... Uh, yeah, we got a ton of comments. People mostly saying they love it. Some people saying that they're not sure it'll work in like Pro One FD. I think it might be able to, but uh, I think what? it depends. I think it depends on the amount on the amount of people who signs up, because when they only have thirty five people, thirty six drivers sign up, a regular top thirty two qualifying doesn't sound that bad. But I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago when they had like sixty something drivers. Yeah. Yep, that, that was, was a shit show. They yeah, had 60 drivers at Long Beach and Irwindale Jesus, because it? the majority of the drivers resided right there in California. And that's why uh, Formula Drift implemented the rule that if you want to run Irwindale, you have to run one other event outside of Long Beach to even be considered to run at Irwindale. Oh, there you go. That's, that's smart. Yeah, so that but, was, but that was one of the other rules. But we still had to see it through 60-something. Right. Um, and I re- do you remember? Did you just almost throw up? <laughs> <I did. laughs> He's a little burp in his mouth. <laughs> Jesus! But do you remember they used to like the the first um, top sixteen drivers? They wouldn't have to do double qualifying. They only had to do one. Remember? Yeah, I remember that. that so was they were kind of try- they were ca- they already trying to short it up. Yeah. yeah. So now the last year when they only had like I think it was thirty six or thirty seven drivers for Pro mm-hmm. One, they decided you know everybody does two qualifying runs. Yeah. Keep so. it, keep it exciting, and uh, I, we are gonna. I don't want to talk about that too much this episode because next week we're actually gonna do a very special episode, and I think our guest. Well, we, you can, guys we want, can talk about. You guys that. don't want to miss that. You don't want to miss it, you <laughs> idiot. So I'll read a different comment. Um, this one's from Brent Moore. Brent says, "I'm usually not one to judge someone's style of their clothing, but what in the fuck, dude?" I think, I'm assuming he was talking to you. No, I was talking about Paco's stupid shirt. I have the best choice of shirts in between you guys. No, he's talking about oh. my, my kimono, probably. <laughs> I don't see what's wrong with wearing a kimono on a Sunday during the mimosa, mimosa cast with your friends. But I, I was kind of jealous when I showed up and you, you right. opened the door in a kimono. Man. I was like, why didn't I brought mine? Yeah. I actually bought that thing after Form of the Drift Irwindale like two years ago. We went to a little Japanese town area. Yep. I think I was with one of you. you, know, is, you. is that a female or male? Is there a male sizing in those? So no, one, it's one size fits all. One size fits all. The problem is... <laughs> it's, uh, it's Japanese size. It's like Sam's built like a female. Like a Japanese female. Yeah. The problem is I've got a pretty Pit large uh, forest wing. And, uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Well, but I, but I got like a big bush down there is what I call it for. <laughs> it's <laughs> like finding a snake <laughs> in the weeds. <laughs> oh, God. They, they say the, the smaller the bush, the taller the tree. Yep. I wonder if that's true. Oh, yeah. I wonder. Okay. Go and show them real quick. <laughs> <laughs> it, it hasn't worked with me, you're saying. <laughs> uh, what, uh, Paco, you got some, some questions? Yeah, well... <clears throat> More than one question, I had tons of questions. Everybody keeps asking about Paco, the... why are you so handsome? Paco, what's your phone oh number? Oh my god, Paco, call me or Tell me every digit of your phone number right now. Can you can we edit like a spark on my eye? Like, cling. like uh, the Snapchat. Uh, oh, okay, okay, we do that on, on <laughs> post. Anyway, so yeah, everybody kept asking me about the horsepower that my stupid ass minivan put on the dyno. Uh, can we because, know yet? Or are you still holding that out? Well, I I'm about to I'm about to spill Okay, the Hey, hold on, let's, but uh, let's do a drum roll. Hold on. Wait, no, no, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what kind of drums are those? It's a drum roll. <laughs> let's have to his drum oh, roll. No, no, I think I don't want to tap the table because the mics are on it. It's going to hold on, it's hold on. make an awful Sam, noise. Let me hear your, your best drum roll with your mouth. Go for it. <laughs> I can't. Well, I guess it is hard. Before that. <laughs> the worst drop. That was, not, that was, a, a, that was like, an engine knocking. It's like in uh, Arrested Development when like they, none of them know what a chicken sounds like or, or moves like. <laughs> abagoo, abagoo. <laughs> like they're making awful motions. So what they think. <laughs> so what did you guys, your best, uh, best guess, wheel and uh, crank? Horsepower. I I would be surprised if it's over 100. I drove it. You yeah. let me drive it that one time. Yeah. And I'd be surprised if it's over 100. Okay. 
I'm going to guess that it is. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no, the, the worst part is, is that I think I think you told me, so I, I don't feel I don't want to say. Well, okay. pretend, forget that real quick and then guess. So we'll, oh oh, I forgot. Uh, like, uh, I'm gonna guess like you got one of those uh, eBay electronic turbochargers, right? That go in like your intake. It's like a little fan that the one that says yeah. promise five the five turbine horsepower. the turbine yeah. charger. Okay. Yeah, you got one of those like Tornado. black boxes that gives you ten extra horsepower. So I'm gonna guess probably four to five hundred. <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> well, not a bad guess. I didn't think about that. I forgot about that. Just, mm-hmm. just so you know, um. We had a little uh, poll at the shop. <laughs> okay. And it's a little one. <laughs> yeah, like we had it. The guesses were between 70 and 85. All of the guesses were in between 70 and 85. Okay. Um, what's <laughs> impressive is that the van actually did a total. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to derail. Hold on. Guys, just because we usually do like a Snapchat. It's just like just to sit down in the middle of the show. And then uh, I started to do it. And then I accidentally clicked the puppy filter. And like, <laughs> I face turned into a dog and I lost it. And then I, I, hope, I hope that's I hope that's recorded. Oh, no, I, I saw it at the car. Like, like, what the okay, go sorry. Go on. Right. So anyways, you yeah, had the little pole where everybody used to sit on. Tiny pole. Oh, nice. So it's like this is going to be like a Mari show when, it, you know, you're about to know if, it, if it's your your kid or not. All right, so, so here it is. I guess just around 100. The horsepower <laughs> of the minivan <laughs> was... Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm so excited for this. Hold on. He's writing it down. 125 to the wheels, 150 to the crank. That's, wow. that's ridiculous. Too. It is ridiculous. I can't believe it. What is that thing supposed to make from the factory? 135... And, and it has 330,000 miles. So I, I thought like it's going to be like pff, 85 to the Felt wheels like maximum. Yep. So this is my guess. If it has 330,000 miles, that engine probably has been through probably at least one rebuild mm-hmm. and, or a head gasket job. So when usually when they do a head gasket job, they shave the heads. You know, like right, they, yep. they, they put it through the machine. You get the machining, uh, just try to shave it a little bit. Yep. And that usually gains compression. Right. So I believe that's what happened because I they can't must do- have really loved that van to take that <laughs> engine to machine shop and have the heads resurfaced. Well, th- this could have been like 15 years ago when this was still a more but expensive vehicle. It was still vehicle. taking kids to the Yeah, to I mean, you know. Well, the previous owner was like, Boy, we can't let that damn van go. Let's mill the goddamn heads down, I, and we're gonna up the compression on this turd box because we're we got oh, we got a is brand new. <laughs> I assume that he was British, the previous owner. It's very, uh, it's very dashing. Ha ha. And the, excuse oh. me, ba- babe. Could we uh, could we please up the compression on our van? We we. That's get, the worst British accent I've ever heard. That was, I'm not the best. At oh, I thought you hello, were. I am British. <laughs> well, did you hear my drum roll? <laughs> <laughs> my accents are about the same. <laughs> I bet. I bet he was like, "All right, Deborah, this is it." <laughs> This van must survive. <laughs> by all by all costs, we must machine this head. <laughs> if compression shall be gained, then it will be your destiny. And scene. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to do with all of so, your ponies? Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> are you Sorry, almost threw, God, Paco. You almost threw in a, uh, a Subaru motor into that thing, the three well, liter Subaru. I was going to do the EG33 uh, is a flat six engine from the SVX. But, you know, pretty common engine swap in those things. I know, yeah. right? Well, there's, that's the thing. There's no common engine swap in those things because the, it has a very unique configuration. So my buddy Keith from Murray Cab Motorsports hey, Keith. keeps trying to convince me to do a 2J, a 2JZ swap. It's probably a good idea. Cutting a hole in the floor and putting, you know, like a dog house or something around it. Duck Got, house? Yeah. yeah, that's like a cover. On the duck. <laughs> it's a duck house. Who let the duck house, house out? out. <laughs> Woo. Anyway, that's so the noise the duck make. Which is funny because my original plan was putting a one Z, like make a yeah. hole in the back and put an engine. Put a duck house on it with a duck house and no no drive shaft, just <laughs> transmission to differential and. What's yeah. the, the the weight distribution in your car must be pretty fucked well, up. But that's the thing. Like right now, it is amazing. When I I took it to one of the NASA drift events and I cornered uh, weighted, and the the guy who was at the at the uh, how you call that the tech? Gantarita. Tech. No, the, well, the, yeah, well, like, <coughs> Jesus sorry, he was surprised. He was surprised. Like it was almost twenty five, twenty five on each corner. It was almost perfectly corner balance hmm. with me on top. And, and so and that's about two hundred pounds of spaghetti. Well, it was three thousand. No, don't three, be three thousand pounds. Don't be total. insensitive. He, he's full of uh, kind of yogurt. I love my carne asada. Don't don't judge me. You were full of gogurt and baby carrots. <laughs> <laughs> 
my favorite combo. <laughs> I love it. So anyways, I'm still not sure what I'm going to do. I wanted to just to throw a turbo on this engine and... That'll blow up immediately. Yeah, well, yeah but um, I have a... I was thinking about buying a supercharged engine, which it came factory yeah. uh, forced. So those take the, the boost pretty good. <coughs> right, we'll see. I'm this still is, not this sh- is coffee not- I know. I'm sorry, guys. Well, like, for some reason, the allergies are starting to kick in. Back to health cast. <laughs> what you guys want to ask how I'm doing? Healthy wise? Uh, how you doing? How, uh, well, I don't really give a shit. Anyways, oh, I got, I got a, Bazinga. I got a, uh, I actually got a question got here. Got a hernia. <laughs> Corey's not doing well. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> this is from uh, Naeem <coughs> Fuharumi. I'll take how would you, how would you? We'll take care of this. How would you, Sam, would you read that from me? Naeem Fuharam. Fuharam? Yep. Wow, you're really good. Thank you. Good job, Sam. You're welcome. Uh, I've got a couple questions. First one is for Sam. Hello. Can you tell us how Turek lost Red Bull sponsorship? <laughs> Second one is, do you see FD cars evolving into kind of like a GT3 cars in like five years? And last one, what is going to happen with Osbo's car because it was only made by Scion? Well, let's answer these one at a time. Uh, I'll start with the first one. Uh, why Turk lost Zion? And actually, it's funny. He lost they Red should... Bull. Or, yeah, not sorry, Zion. Red Bull. Jesus. And it's funny because I actually answered this question in uh, my Driver on Driver episode with him. It's because he uh, he flying elbowed uh, a a Red Bull model off of his car. I bet he did. He's yeah. a beast. Yeah, he just he gets really pumped up at events, and he jumped off his car and just elbow dropped this girl. You like Macho Man? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Randy Man Macho Savage. <laughs> <laughs> the Handy Man Macho Savage. No, uh, I have no idea why why Red Bull uh, decided <laughs> to stop supporting this program. But I mean, as you see, you see in every every show, every every driver, every they I mean they have sponsors that come and go, and title sponsors come and go, and they they right now he's on Wasn't he's on Gum Out. He was on Retax. Kind what, of. Have you, uh, side note here: How whatever happened to Retax? Are they still around? Or are they I kaput? Know. I don't know. Who? I I wasn't there. I don't know. I don't, don't really, you guys I don't usually eat. talk before you go to sleep? Like you and Ryan? You yeah, call well, we usually FaceTime once or twice uh, a night. Usually one in the middle of the night. Like if one of us wakes up, like we have us packed. Like, like well, if you wake up and you can't sleep, give me a FaceTime. And like I will I'll do that just a couple sure, times a night. Just make sure you wake up. And you haven't got anything? He hasn't given me No, we don't really tell any secrets. We just talk That's about like video and camera stuff and cars. And shoes. Oh. And shoes. <laughs> no, I really don't know. But uh, it's not uncommon for, for <laughs> sponsors to change. Like Red Bull was... Uh, they're... they're yeah, I guess they're on Mad Mike now. I almost said that they're not maybe, in. Maybe they moved on. What I mean, they did Mad Mike in for like, a while, right? Yeah, wasn't was the Red Red Bull at a certain point a Formula Drift sponsor? I, I think so, I think so because they had the what did they have on the like the Port of Long Beach? Didn't they have a drift event on the Port of Long Beach? I can't remember. And like Corey used to have sponsors, and now he doesn't. Yeah, just like, so, just like I, that. so I have to re I have to rebirth all those again. Rebirth is that what it's called? <laughs> So sponsor the the, the the message we want to say here sponsors are like uh, disease. candy they just they come and go come and go <laughs> mm-hmm. just like Corey's dad <laughs> <laughs> I miss him um, so what second part of the question the second part of the question is do you see FD cars evolving into kind of a GT three car in like five years. They're already kind Which of like I'm a assuming GT3 he's car. when he says a GT3 car is like a Le Mans like spec series style car. Because th- a GT3 is actually a Porsche, and I don't think they're going to all be Porsches. No, but, but I could, if I don't. But that's the thing. Like the, the thing about the GT3 is like a factory car that comes with a roll cage. It, it comes pretty much ready to go to the track. So like a spec, and it's very like it has like no air conditioning. It's got no door handles. It's got like a little tab you just yeah. pull and opens. Well, we kind of got into that a little but bit I last think, one, last podcast where he yeah, said that it'd be I cool to see a second series like that. I don't think there's ever going to be. I think there will probably for the foreseeable future always be an unlimited main series. Not unlimited. There will yeah. be limitations, but you know, not to the point where you have to have a certain spec tire and a certain spec uh, vehicle model. But I think that, like we said, it'll be really cool to have an which, all S13 with KA. Which, by the way, that. I have a good parenthesis on that. Uh, when I, after, Just remind me to talk about it after we're done with the question. Corey's the, making faces at me. No, I, saw, I, looked over, I looked over and I saw Sam and his glasses were sliding down his nose and he just looked like a really old guy just sitting there like, what am I looking at right now? You're just yeah. kind of like... Oh. So what's the was third part of the question? Third part of the third part of this question here. Man, he wrote a lengthy one. And the last one, what is going to happen with Osbo's car? Because it was only made by Scion, which remember, Osbo drives a TC, which they did not make a Toyota TC, I believe, anywhere. Is that is that going to happen? Like the TC actually going to stop being a that's, TC? That's what I don't know. So Are we going to see the comeback of a Celica? Because as far as I know, the TC pretty much replaced a Celica. Sorry, so, hold on. 
I've what got you? a work text. Oh God! No, it's uh, it's very unprofessional. But uh, you know, when 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 your boss uh, says, "Hey, what the fuck is going on with this video?" I've got about, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta answer. Hold on, I need, I need ten seconds, guys. So Corey, hey, what are your thoughts on that? Like, I, I uh, the TC was pretty much the replace direct replacement for the Celica. They drop the Celica, right? They bring in the C, the TC, which was pretty much the same thing: front wheel drive, sporty two door, coupe aimed to the young people, kind of like what the Celica was. Yep. Right, so sign is gone. Right. Toyota's taking taking the ba- the brand back. As far as I know, the TC in Japan is sold as a Toyota. Right. Right. It was, was it, what is it called? Is it a Toyota Coupe or something like that? TC. I don't even know. I, I I'm sure if anything, it's just going to be considered grandfathered in. Like before that that car, I believe Kanguchi drove the TC. Uh, Tony Angelo drove the TC, Did it and it was rear wheel drive. Yeah. And then they made a rule that you can no longer drive a converted rear-wheel drive drift car in Formula Drift. But... Unless he was... No, no. Well, there was a rule that, first of all, you could do it because I believe there was even a Honda and even like a... What, what was that? The, an element. There was a Honda element that actually drifted as well. Yeah, I remember but, that. That was weird. Yeah, so there was a... It was wide open. You can convert front-wheel drive cars to rear-wheel drive cars. Well, so what happened was is they made a rule... But since the TC was running before that rule, they considered it grandfathered in. So I don't see it going anywhere. It could be whatever it wants because it's always going to be considered wasn't grandfathered in. was that rule based also on like we can only bring cars that are compared to rear-wheel drive that are available as an all-wheel drive vehicle somewhere? Right. Yep. So I believe the TC was available as all-wheel drive, at least in Europe or maybe even no, in No, I think that was with Tanner Faust's deal on the Passat. Well, yeah, that's that's. No, I don't think I th- no. The TC was grandfathered in originally because oh, I don't think so it was. Oh, the TC was before that rule. Right, so right. The TC, there's no all-wheel drive TC. Right. Hmm. But Tanner and the Passat, yeah, there was there was a all-wheel drive Passat. And the the Element, those things are all-wheel drive, so those yeah. kind of make sense too. It's still, yeah, back then it didn't matter. I I just I really want to think what was the mindset behind like uh let's bring an Element because they they already had the S two th- Honda was already making the S two thousand which I only. Eat. And had two or three people have ever used in Formula Gen- G. Chris Jenner had brought an S2000. Nothing was Alex pretty Pfeiffer. badass. I really there want that go. car to, to work. Dude, it, it was, it, uh, it, that car looked pretty pretty amazing. I remember I remember I was taking photos on uh, that season, and I love taking photos of Jenner's S2000. It looks so different. So, so bring me back to the, the root of the question yeah, again. So the Sorry, question, I was, yeah, so was the answering qu- my, my text messages. Hi, uh, P.S. Hi, Andy LaPuka. Yeah, hey, boss. Oh, he was, hey, well, we're about to release the, the Vaughn release video, reveal video, and... Uh, that I've been working on. And he said, hey, Sam, this video sucks. Throw it out. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Andy. And for you guys, that's uh, undersc- or at uh, gay underscore Andy. If you guys want to say you see a hairy If you want to say something to him and be like, hey, stop picking on Sam. If you want to see a hairy guy with no shirt laying in front of a bunch of cars, that's where you go. So sorry to get off topic. But anyways, the original question is, last one, what is going to happen with Osbo's car? Because it was only made by Sam. Well, I'm guessing Osbo is going to quit drifting entirely. Rockstar pulled out. Sam he looked out. pretty weak this last season, right? Yeah, I think he didn't even qualify for a couple rounds. Yeah, he was he was hard up. But anyways, I don't know what's. what's well, going hopefully, happen. he just disappears entirely. Uh, here, but really? Uh, yeah, hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Oh, what? Well, g- who is this? <laughs> uh, Santa Claus. Oh, we were just <laughs> talking about you. H- hello. I thought they called him like Hello. Krampus or something weird up there. Up Hi, there Saint Nick. Norway. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong country. So, is this the Swedish screwdriver himself? It is. The, <laughs> that's exactly who it is. Uh, or the <laughs> hey, Swedish chef, or whatever you want to call me. But uh, yeah, Swedish screwdriver. <laughs> Hi, Fred. Um, Hi, Freddie. This is Sam. <laughs> I don't know if you recognize my smooth voice, but we spent a lot of time in a car together. Um, you really like me. <laughs> you, <laughs> you expose your your uh, Norway dominating plans to him. That's Paco. Yeah, you, you know. Yeah, Paco. you know that. You know the real the real reason why I'm here is to try and infiltrate the uh, you know the 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 American uh, defense systems, and it looks like Norway has some. We still have some way to go before we're uh, we're able to to kind of do what we it. want over here. Well, keep trying, buddy. Did you see? <laughs> yeah. Do you see what you just started, Sam? I started World War Three <laughs> with Norway. Jeez. Uh, what uh, what's going on with you, Freddie? Are you in Long Beach yet? 
I'm not in Long Beach yet. I was there last week just scouting a little bit. Um, now I'm actually in Carlsbad, California at my girlfriend's house and oh. uh, kind of, you know, live that SoCal life. Do you guys kiss? Flat, you know, flat bills, black sunglasses, cruise up and down the coast. Nice. Sam has a really good question for you. Do you, do you kiss your girlfriend? Do I kiss her? Yeah. Um, you not yet. You know, we're, we're <laughs> only <laughs> half a year into it. Is you're on the holding hands stage? Yeah, hold, holding hands. So, nice. to that. so you're getting some downtime before the, the storm next week? Kind of. That's the, that's the plan. Um, although being with her is kind of a storm already. But yeah, Whoa. it's definitely some downtown. Is she going to listen to this podcast or are you going to get in trouble for that statement? I'm going to get in trouble. But I like that. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say, Osbo, you sound more. You, you sound like a smooth talker right now. Just like I'm chilling, catching waves. Yeah, you're way too calm, man. Man, what's w- w- wow? You just soaking up the Cali lifestyle. Winning a championship does that to you. You know, you sit down on the front porch every night. You know, old fashioned. You know, reading a good book, oh, yeah. firing up the fireplace. I've been, dude. I've, <laughs> I've contemplated retiring. Well, well, you know, well, I think uh, well, I, we're going to probably rile you up a bit. And by the end of this podcast, you're going to be pretty uncomfortable and mad and like just, just really <laughs> we're going to take that away from you. Enjoy. You're going to you're, you're okay. sh- show up to Long Beach, partly balding, um, <laughs> like looking like Corey. <laughs> you're going to start looking like me. Oh, man. Uh, pick up probably five or six pounds around the hips. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm working on that. And, but, five, uh, and five or six more girlfriends because we know how Corey rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's what's going on? Uh, your car didn't work very well last year. Are you making some big changes, or we're we've tried out some changes, uh, a bunch of little things. Obviously, the biggest change is the tire that I'm really stoked about. Yeah, um, makes it has been really welcoming. And what's cool about winning the championship is that people start listening to you. Yeah, and uh, we've helped develop the new tire. Awesome. Really excited about it. But obviously. We don't know, you know, how we're going to fare in competition yet, but I'm really excited going into Long Beach, and it definitely feels like a step up from the Hankook RS3, so that's uh, that's a good sign. And then, you know, Steph and the guys have been working on motor stuff. We've been trying some new sleeved setups, you know, for the motors, bigger turbo, different cams, all that stuff, but we're still, we're still having some reliability issues with our motors, so for Long Beach, we're going to run our Irvindale setup Pretty okay. much. What? Nice. Is, yeah. How many motors did you go through last year? I know we saw a lot of uh, motors coming <laughs> in and out. I think two in competition last year, and uh, three or four the year before. Wow. Um. So you know we're still learning, but the guys have it. You know that's the price you pay for trying to do something out of the box, and we're right. we pushed those two point seven liters pretty far. Yeah, I was gonna say um, you're, you're making a lot of horsepower out of a four cylinder there. I don't think it's anyone else even running a four cylinder. Right now, you are Sam. Oh, I mean an FD. Dumb. <laughs> well, uh, Castro is this year. Wait, is it? Yeah, well, no, uh, I, let, let's talk about that in a second. I was just gonna say earlier. You know, it's nice when you have championships because people start listening to you. So, you know, when I won mine a cu- couple be- years ago, I just, I <laughs> people were listening to me left and right. Now I just can't get them to stop. The hot dog eating championship. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you? So do you have a Pro Two license? Yeah, man. Yeah, I have. I do have my Pro Two license. So I will be seeing you at Long Beach. I will be seeing you. I'm not running Atlanta or Florida, unfortunately. He doesn't want to get run over by Vaughn. Do you have anything I, to say about that? Yeah, I was worried. <laughs> I was concerned about you that year, by the way. Uh, so I'm gonna do uh, Texas and Phoenix in Pro Two. Oh, awesome. Yeah, you, you got to retain a license so you can brag about it in the bars for years to come. Yeah, man. <laughs> I still do. Well, people still don't know who I am, so I can talk about them. and be like, oh, that's sweet, dude. That's super fun. The whole, cool. the whole Pro 2 schedule, just you know, doing four events is way too much commitment for Corey, so he's only going to do two. You know, take it easy this first year. <laughs> <laughs> so in surfing, you have free surfers. In drifting, do we have free drifters? I feel like you guys qualify. What does that mean, free drifters? It's a, it's a free spirit. Like, yeah. doesn't really care about the cops. Just want those dope shots. And Corey, you definitely have one of the dopest shots in FD history. You know that wheel lift in Texas. Oh yeah. So I feel like kind of Ryan Ren- Reynolds. Of You're the, the Ryan drift. Reynolds of the well, drift world. Well, Holy do shit. you know what? That was actually the run where you remember giving me that pep talk. We were sitting down, and you're like, "Man, do you know what? I want you to go out there and focus." 
I want you to put your head into the game and put your shoes and socks on because you can't keep driving barefoot. And uh, that's what happened. It was awesome. So thank you for that. Oh, well. <laughs> All I had to do was welcome. put on shoes. Yeah, Osbo yeah. always. Do you remember Osbo all the times we used to spend together? Like you know, we would uh, running, play laughing, chess, and run. You know, it's just all good times. <laughs> we'd yeah, la- we'd laugh what a happened? lot. Yeah, it's what awesome. happened? You never come and visit anymore. Oh, uh, you know, you're yeah, I've been... too busy out there. Back, back to your tire stuff. Because <laughs> I, I want to know. Well, no, no. I, 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 we can talk more about Corey and yours relationship, your troubled past later. Um, <laughs> but, but I want to know about the, before we navigate too far away, the, the next end tire stuff, what, uh, so you, you help them develop these tires. How, like you, you drove their current lineup and you said, this is how the tires should be. <laughs> like, I'm just curious. <laughs> it's it? so we, we know, you know, our team, we, we treat drifting very much as a motorsport where perhaps other teams maybe not so much in fd but where where's other parts of the drift community that it's more a show to them for us it's diehard motorsports Mm -hmm. so we know pretty well what we're looking for in a tire you know in terms of consistency you know overall grip stuff like that so we have our little benchmark test routine we do so we you know we benchmark test the tires and we told them we want this 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 nexon was already working on their uh, and Farah, uh, you know, the the semi-slick compound. And then they made a couple variations that they were then going to put into production, depending on which one we liked. So we went to the track a couple times with them. We gave them our feedback, which is a very specialized form. You know, we, we basically we tested it the way that you would test any other, like, right. uh, competitive you know, material or product, you know? Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, you know, we did that. And what's really cool about Nixon is that they're in expansion mode. You know, they cool. really want a championship in Korea right now. They're pitting Hankook and Nixon against, it, it, you know, each other. And yeah. I think that competition is really good and that's going to help drive the sport. Yeah. And, definitely happy to see another tire manufacturer because they were in it before. Right. But they kind of were, had a limiter, a, a smaller, more limited role, but now that they're, they're they're your one of your sponsors and then i think a couple other guys right who else is on yeah you know that's kind of they 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 did their their thing in fd way back but that was not a priority for them and they didn't have a good tire at the time so they pulled back Mm -hmm. which definitely left a couple teams struggling at the time but i think for the company that was a smart move so they could refocus and then come back hopefully swinging you know but we'll uh we'll focus on driving it to do yeah, I was gonna say you, you have a big advantage over everybody else because you have a uh, Stefan Hippopotamus on your side, who's uh, <laughs> who's just the beast when it comes to tuning and essentially, especially with uh, what you're doing. You know, he's he's a wizard. <laughs> yeah, he is for sure, and he's he's very. I think Stefan's biggest strength is uh, he's bringing in people that are better at than him in a lot of fields. Like he yeah. will reach out to a lot of motor builders and this and that and. And, you know, and he, he's obviously very, you know, he knows a lot himself, but he recognizes there's, that there's still things he doesn't know about. And then he learns those things. So that's why he's always growing, always improving. And, you know, I feel like when I came under, under the wings of Papadakis racing, um, I, they were really good at all the things that I were not good at, but then I brought something new to the table, you know, the front end design and we we learned a lot from the supras back in the day and now the t has very much a similar setup to what we had on the supras and also what you'd find on like an e46 bmw and stuff like that so we've we've learned a lot from each other but i've definitely learned you know probably the the most from him um so you know not only about cars but about life you know? <laughs> all, he has some really in, interesting theories about Stuff, you know, so question. He's a, he's a fun guy. So question, man, and, and this this question actually comes from a lot of the people we actually told uh, we're gonna talk to you, and they send their questions to you. Um, uh huh. And everybody wants to know like what's what's going on. Like for example, you here in the states, you're drifting four cylinder scientist he, and in Europe mm-hmm. you're drifting uh, an FRS with a big NASCAR engine. Sounds like totally the opposite, you know. Um, 
are you doing the four cylinder car and the TC here in the States? Mostly because that's, uh, that's, uh, th your team, uh, Papa Burger is, uh, team racing team. Is that, is that like their thing? Like the four cylinders or is that just like a personal preference for the, for the, this kind of competition? What, what can you tell us about that? It, it's kind of complex, but if you look at the uh, Papadakis Racing's previous car, you know, Tanner's TC, that car had an NASCAR V8. So it's not like they're locked to this design or that design. Uh, the thing with the first TC was that back then they were allowed to do some uh, firewall uh, modifications, which allowed them to get a decent weight distribution in the car. But that car actually made the rule book stricter. So with the new TC, we are not allowed to do anything to the firewall. Mm -hmm. And um, the problem with the front-wheel drive car is that there's very little... Basically, the, the firewall sits almost at the front axle. So we needed a light motor. That's the bottom right. line. Okay. Need a, but, so it's that plus the fact that Scion definitely wanted us to show what that motor could do. That's another aspect. And now that we've learned more about the motor, we've realized it's not, it's actually a pretty good motor. Is that the you motor that, that is in the stock Scion? Like it's the same type of base model motor or is that? Yes, that's exactly what it is. So you get that, those motors in the TC as well as in the minivans. But we're using the bigger cranks, it's the 2.7. What's funny is that it's an eco motor, you know, it's meant to be it's efficient not, yeah, and it's good not mileage. Meant to make 900 horsepower. How come is my right. mini, how come is my minivan only making 150 horses and your <laughs> minivan is making over 850? It's, 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 you got to run it on corn fuel, dude. Ah, ah. that's the trick. Should I? Yeah. Do, I'm just gonna bring the the van to Papadopoulos' shop and make them do work their magic. Make them. That's what. Yeah, put a <laughs> nuclear reactor in the thing. That's what we can, did. Can I, can I be can I be you guys new teammates? Since apparently you guys are stacking on teammates. Now, uh, sure, we're, 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 we're definitely going the Hispanic route with, uh, <laughs> ah, you know, south of the border. Yeah, well. <laughs> you need to start working so, on your Spanglish then. Oh, Arriba. See, yeah, I will. He, 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 has, he has some good, there. he has some good, good Spanish. He was good buddies with Diego. Oh, see, sí. see, sí? uh, que onda? Cuatro, cuatro, también. Y tu mama. Uh, <laughs> Should we believe this? <laughs> Can you translate, Paco? <laughs> no, I don't want to. <laughs> so, how long have uh, you and Stephen Mommy Daddy Kisses been, been working together? <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> uh, okay, so, oh full disclosure. Goodness. I've been sitting on that I one for... Stephen Mommy Daddy Steph Kisses? <laughs> <laughs> Steph was actually quoted in a magazine in Norway, and they named it Star uh, Papa Kekis. <laughs> <laughs> and that was kind of random. So, yeah, it's, uh, we, we've been working, working together since 2011. So, geez, it's been like five, six years already, which is kind of crazy. And you obviously were very successful in your, in your Supra. Was he, did, did he, when you joined it up with uh, Stephen? <laughs> I can't say. <laughs> what, did he what, did he just hop, hop into the TC then, or did he help out with the Super Program? I forget. I don't know. He did not help out with the Super Program mm -hmm. he, uh, back then. He, so what happened is my rookie year in the U.S., 2010, we won Rookie of the Year uh, title that year. And that winter, we got a sponsorship from Need for Speed. So we were supposed to run the Supra the year after. And when I say we, I mean my friend Stefan from Norway and I. Yeah. And then... That same winter, Steph called me and said, hey, uh, Frederick and I briefly oh. met him, and I had a lot of respect for the dude. And he called me and he said, hey, there's a chance Tanner won't be drifting next year. We'd like you to drive our new TC. Yeah. And that was a curveball, right? Because right. back then, I, I still think a Supra is the best chassis for drift. Really? And I was really set on making that work. And then... The TC, I was like, hmm, I'm not really sure how this is going to work. But then I added all the pros up and all the cons up. And, you know, there's no way you can say no to a, to a, um, to basically like, a, like an offer like that. Yeah, yeah. And in hindsight, I'm really thankful I did because it's really opened my eyes and 
I think we've taken a car that may not be the ideal drift platform and really showed what it can do, and that made last year's championship feel so much sweeter. So it's been an incredible journey. You know, it's uh, it really has. Yeah, I've been really kicking myself in the shorts ever since I turned down that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. He called you first. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I, I just. Do you know what I told him? I, I couldn't make it happen. I've been. Uh, I, that's when I was really getting heavy into Call of Duty. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I kind of, I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot. But I want to actually. Do you know what? I, I did want to talk to you about uh, your whole super thing. Like, I remember watching FD that year, and I think it was actually my first year ever watching FD because I didn't start drifting until 2011. And uh, oh. I remember actually watching you at Long Beach in the Supra. And one of the biggest highlight thing was actually Osbo underneath the bridge. He was like the dude that brought mm. the style to yeah. FD that year. And uh, yeah, well, well, thank you. The yeah. hairstyle, but maybe. The, oh, yeah. No, it was. Uh, but he was. You were. You were an animal in that that super because I think I don't think many supers were actually competing in that. We missed out, which is weird that Osbo said like that's his that's like, his ideal you know picturesque best drift car and like no one's driving a super right now. What what makes that car? better than the s14 for drifting which there's thousands of those out there still it it's um it has a better front end mm -hmm. it has a uh, double wishbone front end which is kind of favored under the fd regulations you want a car with double wishbone uh, it has really good you know like wheel well space up front it's actually not that heavy it has a really beefy drivetrain and diff and axle setup <laughs> that you can use right out of the box uh, it has a good weight distribution. Okay. Obviously, it comes with two J. You don't have to, yeah. You don't have to swap a two J in it, which everyone does to everything else. So. <laughs> it, it comes with exactly. It with but um, and, uh huh. Sorry, sorry. Keep going. No, no. So you know, the the whole thing is just it's it's built for it. It's it's you know the, the new Lexus RC would be kind of the new school yeah. Supra because it has a very similar drivetrain. So that that's obviously my wet dream to build well, a Lexus RC, what, but you know yeah well um what's interesting uh we had a couple a couple drivers who have done uh supras uh one of a uh, personal friend spike chen he's actually running pro two this year he was building uh -huh. he was building a supra with an ls and i think i'm not i'm not sure if he's i don't think i don't think he's running it anymore he's going back to his s s13 but he said mm -hmm. just like the Supra just didn't felt as nimble as the S14, that the Supra just felt it's just bigger and more, how to say, like more raw. So you, you, you're, now you're used to drive the TC, which is kind of like small, nimble. Do you, how do you, it's how, not, though. How do you the compare Supra it? The Supra has a longer... The, so here's the trick. The TC is a much bigger car than the Supra. Yeah. It has way longer wheelbase. The Supra is actually a short, um, uh, short wheelbase car. I think a lot of people are used to Supra. They they're, they may not be pushing it to the envelope in terms of their setup. A lot of people have really lacy hubs on the front and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's it's people still have to unlock the potential. If you look at Hibino in Japan, he yeah. built the Supra last year, wise fab uh, Supra. That thing is ripping. Yeah. And that's kind of my wet dream, too, brother, <laughs> the way he built that thing. So it's, you know, it's obviously it's preference. And the Nets Chaps is obviously a great platform as well. Uh, but I feel like if you do it right and spend the, the time testing and getting used to the car and everything, it will, the Supra will hold the upper hand. But uh, maybe I'm jaded. <laughs> so with, uh, you know, I know that Scion as a company is, is, is no more, but you're on the Scion Racing by Toyota team still. Uh, what do you foresee? I know it's so early, of course, to talk about 2017, but do you foresee still campaigning the TC because of all the development you put into it? Or or do you think you might look into another platform? It's still so early to tell, I know, but... This may be the last year of the TC. <sighs> oh, wow. And, and started to crush your dreams, guy. <laughs> no, I mean it's. I, I I can admit that like I didn't like it at first because I thought, what the hell is a modified front wheel drive doing here? And I see, I see, of course, that for the branding purposes, you know, the youthful market that Cyan was going for, it makes sense to have the car around. But it's still, you know, it's still a Franken car. Not to say that you haven't won a championship with it, which is <laughs> which is widely respectable. But it's still a Frankenstein car that you can't buy. So, or at least right. in, in the real wheel drive format. So, what do you think? Do you think you're going to look for like a, that Lexus RC style or something that brings you back to your super roots or bring a super back? I, 
I, you know, I the Red Super is still in California, by the way. It's oh, locked yeah. up in a secret location. Where is that? Uh, Oh, <laughs> I could tell you, and then I'd have to kill you. Let we me have, bring we it have up, no like, secrets on Maximum Driftcast. <laughs> uh, so okay, know. okay. <laughs> well, it's you know we may bring it out. Um, we've been talking about maybe having some Pro Two drivers drive it. It needs an update, cool. but yeah. But we, I think, I think for us, Scion now being phased back into Toyota may be a good thing. Yeah, it's um, a, you know, it's a it huge was, thing. You've got a wider uh, right. option for cars now. Right, that's one thing, and maybe it's still too early to say what 2017 is is going to look like. Um, but I think from the outside look at it, drifting is an important market, right, for youth marketing, and mm-hmm. it's a it's a big deal. And you know, obviously, the FRS is now going to be an 86, and you well, know, it should have been ooh. from the start. <laughs> the, People would argue that, um, and you know, I, the the kind of inside scoop on the whole Scion thing at Toyota is that Scion has been a great uh, ex- experience. You know, they've tested it out. They tried to sort of do for the youth market what they did with Lexus for the older, more you know, premium market, mm-hmm. and it worked the first years. But then they weren't able to capitalize it, so yeah. might as well just roll it back into Toyota. But they. They're, they feel like they've created Toyota customers for years to come. So yeah. I, I think it's a great thing. It, you know, everything's not finalized over at Toyota. We'll see what happens. But our job this year is obviously to keep pushing Scion. Scion is still around, and right. cars are being sold all the way through the year, TC as well. So my job is still to be the TC ambassador, and then we'll see uh, what happens next. Oh, yeah. Nice. Uh, you know, there's some news on the horizon. Um, I again, it's if there's no secrets here, I probably shouldn't say more. Yeah, I gotcha. So, so maybe next year, like you, you might want to stay in like the whole uh, Franken car platform. I'm thinking maybe a Generation One XB uh, <laughs> with with maybe like a rear ship mounted V8 or something. Just like just, just give me some credit I mean, if, you, if you decide to do that. Let me know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, you know, I started off as being really skeptical on the whole thing, converting a front-wheel drive car. Now I'm kind of, I've grown so deep into it that I feel like it adds to the diversity of the sport. I mean, look at, look at the Passat that Papadak is built for Tanner. That thing's kind of cool and unique. And, mm-hmm. you know, we could all be driving as 14s out there, but it's cool seeing something different, oh, that's right? That's great. Well, so, and the biggest thing is, of course, not, not campaigning in a 20-year-old car because for mm-hmm. marketing and, and getting getting dealership uh, or automaker uh, support into the series, yeah, you can't be driving 20-year-old cars all the time as much as they are fun. <laughs> And, and that's the big argument in Drift right now, right? If you look at Drift All Stars, they they announce right. that they don't want to have old cars in there, and then it turn into a shitstorm. You know, people yeah. are, and and I I get both sides. You know, drifting is supposed to be this like this like scruffy like uh, lifestyle thing where you can bring what you have or like run what you run kind of thing, and. And that, on the other side of the spectrum, you have, you know, the, the top FD teams and they're really right. commercial, corporate, like, way of doing it. I mean, I wouldn't it be cool if, like, pro FD was 32 cars or 16 cars even, and it was all the premium brands battling it out, right. like Toyota against BMW, Mercedes, Audi, you know, and it was full-fledged DTM, not DTM, but, yeah. like, full-fledged still room for individual styles but like actual pro level well, we, stuff we've and talked a lot about that, that actually like on that topic of of one how to grow the sport that's like one of the major themes on our show here but also two, like you know what how how to get it to be more mature and of course the whole like uh, ragtag drifting thing will always be there but yeah in the premier leagues and the premier series on on the planet like like fd and the other major ones you know, I think I think it's okay to aim for the stars and bring in the Lamborghini Gallardo drift car, and and if you know, I think it's okay to make everyone drive a car made in the past twenty five years. You know, because because you do want to see more brands coming in, and I would like to see a more diverse uh, manufacturer cup field, like you're saying. So, well, name any other series that's still running twenty five year old cars. Exactly, well, There's, it doesn't exist. That kind of brings me right. Right. I mean, something. Um, you guys in Norway have an insane variety of vehicles running their series. You guys, you guys are 
like, I mean, I know people have like American trucks with SR uh, setups and like S13 suspensions, all the Ford, uh, like six, we're talking about like 60s cars with newer drivetrains. Uh, I mean, yeah. you tell us like wh wh what's going on in Norway that there's so many different, very, very original, <laughs> authentic vehicles, you know, that are drifting and that look awesome. I, yeah, that's a good question. Like the whole like Gautabil movement has grown really yes. big. And I think it's a combination of things that led to it. You know, a lot of people are pretty crafty out there. They're hands on, they make stuff works. Actually, the Swedes are even better than the Norwegian Norwegians when it comes to car building. But people are pretty crafty. People are well off, meaning that it's very common common to have like a fun project car. So it's really You know, Norway is a small country, 5 million people only, yet 45,000 people come out to these car festivals. So it's like, it's, it's, so, it's embedded so deep within like the, like the, you know, the communities, like everyone has a project car or knows someone that has a project car. Is that, so that's part of it. And then people love everything. They all, they love to build custom shit. Like they're, You know, they they think it's fun. I think that's the bottom line. It's not really organized. It's very informal. It's kind of like a glamorous, like come and just have fun thing, but you just build your own. Just, you What's know, it like hating America though? Because it seems like you're saying your country's a lot better than America. What's that? What's it like hating America so much and saying that we're all poor and we can't afford multiple cars and and we have to pay for no. our health care? <laughs> <laughs> Is that no, because you're a socialist you know, country? <laughs> That, that's the thing. Like, obviously, there's a, there, you know, the car culture and car interest runs really deep in the United States. I mean, no doubt about it. Yeah. But in, in the U.S., there, there are big differences. You know, it's a very big spread between the rich and the poor. Whereas in Norway, which is a socialist country, we're not <laughs> communist, a socialist country that actually works. Everyone's yeah. kind of on the same page. Yeah. So when you go to events out there, it's not like here where... A NASCAR driver is up there and it's the big star. And then you have like the masses watching it out there. It's like everyone's kind of on the same level. Yeah. And, you know, everyone sort of can afford to have like a fun car. And like it's, I don't know, it's, I, I definitely like it over here in the States. But I also like the 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 fact that it's everyone's kind of on the same yeah. level, I guess, back home. It's yeah, I joke, cool. but I fully, I fully support everything that goes on up there. <laughs> so. So I, 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 I wish that uh, I wish that I had more money for project cars. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, yeah. What you just you just filmed your second movie, right? Burning, the 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 more, yeah. more burning. Is that what it's called? Is, yeah, is that more, what it means more, actually. More burning. Heartburn. Heartburn. It, 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 so burning. So it's like a Norwegian take on an English word, right? So burning. It's kind of. It means like. Hooning is kind of what it means, oh, uh, right. really, and it's uh, it's kind of like a modern day cannonball run thing. Nice. It's, uh, don't spoil it! Don't spoil it! <laughs> we just right, bought right. we just bought the Blu-ray. We're we're supposed to watch it sometime after a shoot in the show. Oh, cool! And we were wondering if if you're actually in it, like physically, like where you can actually see, like, oh, there's 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 Fred, there's Fred, Fred, I, there's the little Fred story. I may. I may have a cameo in number two. Oh yeah, I may or may not, and I may or may not be a cop. Oh hell, hell yeah! I'm not. Stay I'm not too. gonna lie, dude. But when I was when I first bought uh, Need for Speed, the last game, and you just came up, and that was like a little thing. Like, oh, here's a new ring in heaven. I I giggled like a little girl. Like, oh my god, there's. there's <laughs> I haven't seen what is what happens. He, he's on the he's on the Need for Speed game. Well, I've had Vaughn tell me to watch out for the next chicane stuck in my head for years because okay. I remember playing Need for Speed uh, Shift when I was a lot, you know, a lot younger, no. and Vaughn kept on saying, "Watch out for that chicane." I was like, "Shut up, Vaughn! I know the chicane is coming." <laughs> <laughs> so is that like Freddy's role in this, or is, is Freddy's no, on the screen? No, he's he's holding a red cup. <laughs> oh, you, you what? Had a, you partying, dude? He's partying. Oh man! Oh, heck yeah, we're partying yeah. in this like undercover. London parking structure, which is technic well, it's supposed to be in LA, and it's like, yeah, yeah, I'm one of the dudes. You're a street like, racer. Uh, wow. No, that was that was pretty bad. Uh, like, seriously, it, uh, when I, I saw a bunch of uh, of the FD drivers, and oh, yeah, I heard that Larry Chen comes out. Even Larry takes, Chen is there, yeah, and he drives one of the one of the cars. So, uh, 
that game kind of like brought like a lot of it, it's cool that you say like oh i'm kind of like playing with my heroes you know yeah so that was kind of cool how much did you play with osbo yeah I, <laughs> Uh, and if you could right now, how much would you play with them? <laughs> this is a, a PG-13 <laughs> show, can tell you right now. No, it's fucking not. <laughs> hey, just be heads up in uh, Long Beach. Paco will be there, Osmo. So Paco, yeah. <laughs> so just, oh. You might have to get I'd stabbed with Papa Nachos. I'll play with you anytime, Paco. Oh, oh, thank you, Poppy. Oh. Poppy. There's Poppy now. That, that's, that's for hey, life. <laughs> hey, so kind of moving forward, what uh, what's up with Castro, dog? What's, uh, you brought him on board? Or was that Stefan's choice? Or uh, how, how does this all working out? So... Uh, Castro's been a good friend of mine ever since he came to the U.S. And, you know, he's been he's been trying to make it happen over here in the States. He's a great driver, and he has a lot of personality and a big heart. And one of those guys that I really... He definitely brings something re- really unique to the table in FD, I think, with his background and his personality. And he's, you know, with... with I don't know exactly what happened in between, you know... Castro and Forsberg's team, and he, I think he learned a lot from you know being under the wings of Forsberg and and driving that car and everything. But obviously, he was out of that seat for this year, and he wanted um, to have his dream car built. So yeah. I think that's what it started out as. So it's an FRS with the two AR motors, similar to what we run in the TC. Um, and cool. he, him and his you know backing sponsors from Dominican Republic came here and. Is on Nixon as well. So, honestly, I'm really jealous of my car. That car is dope as <laughs> And uh, he went testing the other day, and I he looked really at home in it. So I'm I'm really proud to, to you know have him, you know, basically by my side. So I think it'll be a great year for him. He'll learn a lot. He'll be running with a second Papadakis Racing Team, which is Aldo running Aldo, which. Who was who's been one of my uh, key mechanics over the years? He's now running Castro's program, so I think it'll be a great, great deal for him, and I hope everything works out. Um, Stephen Pink Pajamas, does he help you with the other FRSs? Does he have experience there already, or is this like a new venture? So, uh, what I really want to get down to is, is is it shared information between your other FRS builders if they are other people, or is Stephen kind of? Start sure, from scratch. Sure. So I've, I've helped them a little bit with what we've seen has worked and what hasn't worked with our FRSs. But for the most part, they they have their own style and they, they do their own thing. And, you know, they, they share some of the same parts from the TC mm-hmm. and basically the way we run our diffs and all that stuff. Uh, so there's it's a mix, you know, in between the knowledge, in between all of us. And we're all definitely sharing experience. And What's cool is, is that in between the SD teams as well, there's a lot of people are really open minded. So, yeah. our step has gotten input from the Gretty guys and probably a little bit from from uh, Michael Gima, who's a good friend of him. And so it's you know it's a mix and match of everything, but uh, it's it's a very clean build that I really like, and it's simple, basic uses off the shelf parts where they can, like a wise fab kit and all that stuff. And uh, right, so really looking forward to how it works. So is uh is it, are you guys supplying the crew is uh Stefan uh helping him with that too or who's uh who's supplying his team because I know like uh with Forsberg he was kind of supplying his crew is this something you guys are assigning or is it something he's bringing in Yeah Papadakis is uh bringing the crew So Okay cool. All you, right. You guys are you yeah. guys guys are crewing literally crewing for three cars this time. Uh, at some events, yes, because okay. Tanner is going to be running three events as oh, wow. well. So it's a big operation. It's kind of the Joe Gibbs of drifting, huh? Yeah, it's, it's like a uh, it's a big deal. So you know, it's um, but Steph's really focused on dividing tasks so that none of them really interfere with each other. But it's it's definitely a new undertaking. So, but luckily he got his feet wet last year. You know, with running Tanner's car for a few events. It's, it's um, I have a lot of respect for you guys, uh, especially last year, your team. Uh, no, seriously, no. Here, <laughs> these guys are making uh, very awful signs with their hands. <laughs> <laughs> <so you know. laughs> um, what I'm saying, like you know, like you, you guys won last year. But Did you, they? You guys had a very, you know, like very basic trailer you know just a very simple enclosed trailer nothing fancy 
Well, once you go inside, you see that it's all flat screen TV and space shuttles. And space shuttles. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you guys are you guys getting somehow a bigger rig this year? Transporting three vehicles all together. This is a new segment, Rig Talk with Paco. He's always asking about rigs. <laughs> Talk about <laughs> the rigs. <laughs> Yeah, we're yeah we're air shipping everything in with uh, helicopters and no, it's it's basically going to be a a uh, a duplicate setup, you know, a similar trailer, similar rig for um, for Castro's car, uh, and you know, Steph likes it simple, and I think there's Mama something Dockies. to be said about that, you know, as long as you, it's not, it's the whole saying of cooks in the kitchen, right? More people, more stuff doesn't necessarily yeah. make it better. Too many cooks. Um, so Stefan likes to run a tight ship, and uh, it's been paying off so far. And, geez, the, you know, the guys with the big rigs, they're, they're changing tires on their rigs every mile, you know, crossing yeah. the country. It's always, it, it, you know, it doesn't work. Yeah, like look at Jeff Jones, That's for example. The Euro trailers. Yeah. He just, you know, he's changing tires all the time on that rig. Right. <laughs> he he's the only guy that has like an open trailer that that has right. Uh so have you released livery yet for this year? I don't think you have. Yeah, yet. yes. Right. Yes. Dude, follow Sion Racing. F- follow Stefan I I Hippocotamus. I, I just do usually I'm working so I don't look at Instagram Steffi all day like you. Mama Dakis. Yeah. Dude, it looks great. Oh, well, great. That's all I want to know. Is it purple? No, it's yellow, black and it says um what does it say on the side? Osbo. Osbo. Fuck you, America. Is that what it says? <laughs> 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 it says Rockstar. It says an entire um We are running a new Motegi Techno Mesh wheel this year, which is super light. Oh, yeah. Really stoked about that. Uh, they're taking their F1 technology into the wheels. Uh, there's a there's a bunch of minor changes, but I guess to the untrained eye, the delivery looks the same. But there's a bunch of small little changes. So we're that's our style, right? We're just trying to hone everything and make it a little bit better every time. Very cool. So uh, we actually did a post before you just called out of nowhere. We were totally not expecting that. So as soon as you called, we made a post on our social media saying, oh, Frederick the Crossbow just called. and uh, Crossbow? Oh, is it Osbo or Crossbow? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's the Crossbow, crossbow. to you. All right, so uh, the Crossbow just called. So we have a handful of questions here. We're only probably going to do about two or three. But uh, one of the questions by X A Quam Saquonman. Saquonman. We get some of the best followers, Osbo. I don't know if you know that, but he goes, "Who is uh-huh. Osbo's favorite driver to chase in FD?" Oh, favorite driver to chase. Uh, not like playing tag, that? like on the tracks. Bond. I know you kind of prance around with this, like, "Oh my God, I'm going to get you." That would be hard to say because I try and treat them all as just numbers. So I, I try and so there's numbers uh, to you. Just no personality. It's knock them down. It's their plan. Which, which which one brings like that spirit? Like like the whole initial D. Like oh, I have to find his uh, his weak spot. Uh, you know, like which one <laughs> makes you really like brings that spark? Maybe maybe Chris. Oh, maybe Chris. Because uh, I Chris is such a solid. He's a he's a very solid like a consistent driver, right? But it, what's funny in drifting is that that almost hurts you sometimes, sometimes because it, it makes you a little bit easier to read. And, you you know, as a chase driver, you can trust him a lot. Um, so, but I love chasing Chris. Also, I love chasing Ken. Some of the guys that are trickier to follow would be like Forrest Wang because he pours on so much angle and he has a little bit more of like a, he pours on a lot of style, but yeah, he, he's also smart. a little more, he has a style that also has some abrupt stops. <laughs> um, Chasing Dago is pretty which easy, I though, right? Fine, but but that makes it harder to chase for sure. And that's kind of the that's kind of where the sport is at right now. Like trying to find out what these guys' style is and and, and trust them when right. you can, really can't. That's kind of the, well, the thing. Yeah, last week we actually spoke to uh, a guy named Chris Dieger who was trying to shake up kind of the the battle style just because of that that yep, yep. idea so you know have you heard of him and what they're doing with the whole battle style thing i have not i actually but i really like chris the jager i met him a okay. couple of years ago i know he's a super solid driver but i don't know what the battle style is so is essentially that, they're making, you allow yeah so they're essentially making it that you have to initiate a certain way 
And as a lead driver, your job is simply just to like put down a consistent run that your follow driver can follow. So like if mm-hmm. you hit the brakes on a corner or, you know, you accidentally have too much angle and scrub speed, like you are are harshly penalized as a lead driver just to discourage what he considers a very bad thing going on in FD right now, which is people that are fucking with you essentially as a as a uh, but, as a lead car. Right. I so I can see his point. My concern with that right. is that of course you'll get closer tandems. But also if you make it so like, strict, yeah. it turns it a little more bland. And I like the mind games. I like that there's some variation. And right. obviously, I want the judges to pay close attention to that so that if people are deliberately fucking with you, yeah. they will penalize you for it. But like, I like that there's a mental game. And that I like that you can... I like that you can send a curveball. How right. about that? Yeah, if you're if you're initiating all weekend one way, and then suddenly you uh, you do an e-brake initiation, and I mean, some people, yeah, like it, it depends on whether you draw the line. Like, is that unsportsmanlike, or is it just driving, playing the game? Because it's legal, of course, and it's just you know, it's just playing the playing the the the, the title, I guess. Right, like it's it's war, you know, like <laughs> yeah, and and th- there's there's still a, a judge in wars but there's there's i i feel like the whole unsportsman like thing obviously it it should be an even playing field but at the end of the end of the day you're trying to win and you're trying to fight and you're trying to battle yeah and you know i think i feel like if you lose instead of you know blaming judges blah 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 you should try and find out why did you lose and if you can't you know like if judging, I mean, drifting is a judge sport. If mm-hmm. part of doing well in drifting includes stuff that aren't said, if it includes having certain look on the car, if it includes making the car sound a particular way, so be it. Right. You just got to figure that shit out and get on top of it. So where is the line That's drawn? That's my whole take on it. <laughs> I like it. Where Where is the line drawn for you as to what is mind games and what is unsportsmanlike? If you um, if you do stuff like brake checking, stuff like that, that aren't um, in order to let's say try and have drivers crash into you, <laughs> yeah. if you do that with that purpose, that is unsportsmanlike. And but I trust the judges on what they see and what they do. So I feel yeah. like as long as the judges don't, it, as long as it passes the judges, it's it's more or less. Right. right, you know, um, and you know, I've been accused of of, uh, of parking it. You know, Long Beach last year, also with um, with Chris in New Jersey, and none of those things were in order. I've been accused of basically doing it so that they could could crash into me. Mm-hmm. But if you look closer, you'll see that my style is to go really deep and then shoot out on a really late apex. That means you have to be slow on initiation. And it's my style in order to try and gap him out of the turn. Yeah. So so I feel like, you know, if that's what the judges saw and if, if that's the reason why they let it pass, I feel like that's correct. And it was never it's – what it's more to be – it's more about trying to be fast than it is to try and park it. My whole thing is to try and be as fast as possible. So I feel like that's where the confusion stems from. Right. Cool. All right, we I know we don't have much more time, but uh, about one more question, and then uh, we're gonna start wrapping it up here. This is actually from one of the more creative names. His name is Iron Dookie. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> what? Okay, so you've obviously drifted all over the world, many in many sanctioning bodies all over the world. The question is, what's one regulation you would like to change or implement in Formula Drift out of every series you've ever competed in? Oh wow! Um, <laughs> Iron Dookie hit you with yeah. a solid one. <laughs> great name, great solid, question. With a solid Dookie. <laughs> <laughs> wow, one regulation. Um, you would like to implement I, or change? So I would love. It, this goes goes back to developing the sport. I would love to to see the top level sports. Uh, the, the, you know the top level. Um, Serious, uh, put an age gap on cars. I personally, I'd love to see it, but 
instead of them just saying your car can't do more than five years old, what I would love to, to see is that the series organizers, you know, let's say Jim Lau, Ryan Sage, Niall Gunn from Drift All Stars, and perhaps the D1 guys, they got together, they talked to, to all the premier brands out there in, in the world and uh, asked them, what will drifting have to look like for you guys to be interested? Yeah. And I'm sure one of the things they would say is that as long as we're not getting beat by a 20 year old Dotson, that's one thing, <laughs> Yeah. you know, and plus a number of other things and then start designing the sport around what they would like. Yeah. So, so that's kind of, that's one thing I'd love to see. The other thing is, you know, when it comes to more technical stuff for now, it's not a, it's not a big deal because Obviously, a front-wheel drive TC can win the championship, but if it if further down the line you start seeing more of like a set recipe that is required to do well, then I think you need to soften up the regulations to where you can you can make different chassis work. And by that I mean maybe instead of saying you can't touch the firewall, maybe you could say the motor has to sit the motor can't sit further back than right. this and this in relation to the front axle and stuff. But that's not an issue right now. <laughs> yeah, but so has, I feel like it has made your life I feel like drifting is in a good place. Um, you know, it's people are still p- playing around with different recipes and motors right. and it's really diverse. And so, you know, the, there's little things like right now in F D McPherson cars are you know, they're Basically, double wishbone cars are favored by the rules because of how you can how you can widen the stance up front, where you can't do it much with the McPherson because of the top, uh, basically the mounting circle of the shock top and all that stuff. Yeah. So there, there's minor stuff like that, but overall thing is trying to make the sport appeal to more pro would and you, big manufacturers. Would you? So let's say they did like a five to ten year car rule on the main series, and then. If they did like a sub series, it's more like a legacy thing that you know it's not going to be the the com- competitive level level maybe of like pro one. But if they did just like a one or two or three event thing where it's like only two thousand and older cars that have to like be capped at like five hundred horsepower somehow, like would you would you compete in that? Like would that be a fun thing that enables both yeah. everyone to be happy? Right. Um... Yeah. Yeah, I like that idea. I I don't think cap in the horsepower is really. Mm. I don't like that because it takes away from the crazy motors. Right. And at the end of the day, it's not the horsepower that makes the cars fast. It's the grip. Right. So so I don't like limiting power thing unless it starts being like a really key thing. Yeah. But well, we didn't push it. the motor power. Maybe they do a tire size thing too. You can't run wider than 195s. <laughs> I don't know, wider than that. But, right. you know, because I guess, yeah, if, if you don't limit power, but you make it so that your power cannot be applied if you... Uh, have too much i guess well but. one other thing real quick on the two different series i was just thinking about it's like if you do have this top tier premiere series and then you have this like old school retro historic type of series i don't think you're going to get much investors into that series more right. so than so it's Fresh actually going to be more difficult to do probably yeah to it's probably gonna be more privateer based and less funding and it's probably still gonna be hard to do it's gonna be way. hardcore though i figured because it'll be like dudes like osbo or or other any other dudes that have older fd I, cars or demo cars or party cars that they want to still play with Right. Well, I don't know. Like, let's say, let's say uh, all the big series put down like a, like an intention plan. Like within five years, we're going to have, you know, all new car field with manufacturer backing. Yeah. If you get to that level, then maybe you would look at Pro 2 and other series as more of like a farmer league or like a feeder league Yeah. to where even the big teams you know, invest in those drivers and teams to build them up for for the, the Pro One League. So I'm not sure if if making Pro One a bigger field takes away from Pro Two. I feel like it, it makes it even more worthwhile to have Pro Two. Right. It's just all how it's managed in at that case. Yeah. Right. Thanks cool. for that. Well, one, thank you. One one last question before we let you go, Fred. So last year you did. Formula Drift, uh, you did uh, Formula Drift Japan, you did, I mean, I don't know if you started working on the Burning movie since last year. Um, Breakdancing lessons. You've been pretty much everywhere, all over the world last year. What are your plans for this year? What's going on? Are you go- what other series are you going to be ro- driving? What other movies are you going to be shooting? 
Tell us about <laughs> it this year. Oh, man. No, I'm going to sit on my front porch here in yeah. Carl's Bow. Um, <laughs> Drinking old fashioned. Chilling this no, year. <laughs> right? No, I may go to China actually this year, and it's all to be confirmed, but there may be some opportunities in China. I am, for a long time, I've been longing to do a road trip with a race car on the trailer in Norway, where we drive up and down the fjords, we bring a couple surfboards, paddle boards, barbecue an RV and go up and down the mountains in Norway and put on some shows. Oh, yeah. a dealerships and stuff. That's a trip I've been longing to do for years. The last year I couldn't do it because I lost my license out there and it was a big deal. Cool. But whoa, 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 this year, ah, that may yeah. happen. Okay, we got to talk so, about that. I'm really Back looking forward to bit. that. <laughs> well, how did you lose your license? Yeah. Um, base, <laughs> mm, well, the, the, the speeding laws are very strict in Norway. And um, I condone safe driving. But yeah. I was Accidents really happen. Speeding and, yeah. So that was what happened. You and, uh, accidentally went 100. What's crazy out there is, it, it, it was a big. I should have known better, obviously. <laughs> okay. uh, but and and it really hurt because when you lose your license out there, you can't race on tracks. So I couldn't go to any other god I didn't uh, know that. Damn man. What but a- it was kind of like uh, like a. Um, it, we turned it into a good thing because it allowed me to focus on the U.S. And then you saw how that turned out. So mm-hmm. maybe I should have lost my license this year as well. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so that's that's interesting. What uh, what car were you in when the incident occurred? Hybrid. I was in an all electric BMW i3. Oh no! Oh, way. You're in the you're in the toaster car. He's and... like, hey, officer, what did I do? I was borning. <laughs> I, I was over here borning. <laughs> that's so, that's so those things do go 120 miles an hour. Then obviously, they, they're. Uh, they're pretty fast, actually. You and BMAs, but I'm, you know, I'm just trying to pull off my metrosexual look out there. <laughs> that felt pretty good. Well, uh, Osbo, what we've been doing uh, recently is we've been doing a 60 second blast of just the one answer question. So Paco, Sam, and myself will ask you a question. You can only answer it in one word, and then after that, we're gonna set you free into the coast of California. So <laughs> awesome! All right, I'm ready. You, uh, Sam, you want to start this one off? Yeah, I'll fire it up. Okay, uh, so one answer, one word answer if you can, Osbo. Uh, what is your favorite food? Taco. Thank Boom. you. Uh, is the Norwegian Hammer your porn star name? Oh. Oh. Uh, that's a sensitive one. Uh, yes. Do you want to see it? Uh-huh. Uh, uh, where are you going to finish in Long Beach this year? Um... One. Sam, go. Uh, who is your least favorite driver in FD? Oh. Okay. Next question. Uh, <laughs> I'm too politically it's, correct it's, to answer that. I know. I Paco, go. If you, if you couldn't drive a TC, a Scion FRS, or a Supra, what would be your favorite, your, your next uh, drift car? Lexus LC500. Oh, not bad. What? Right. Uh, Sam, you got anything? Have you ever built a snowman? Have you ever built a snowman? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 that was beautiful. Was okay. Can, no, that can was you do that again, yeah. please? Well, what's in on that? Let's in on uh, Osbo we'll, 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 singing. Let's build a snowman. We'll, we'll build. We'll when, build the, look, the, the. Whenever, the, whenever I need an extra FD ticket from Cassidy, I walk over to her and I sing that. That makes her happy. She's Good to a know. Big frozen fan. Because I need can, a parking yeah. pass. Can uh, you do that again? And we're gonna harmonize this with you. Yeah, okay. Okay. Ready? ready? One and a two. Well, and no, no. I let him sing the first part. We'll do the yes, second part. We, I don't I'll know it, but I'm just gonna follow you. Follow me. So Osbo, fire it up. Do you want to build a snowman? It doesn't have to be a snowman. Keep going. That's all I know. (laughs) Osbo, thank you for calling in. We'll be seeing you in probably less than two days. I'll see you tomorrow, You're the best, dude. Awesome. Love all you guys. Yeah, love you too, dog. And we'll be seeing you in how long? See you in a couple days. Two days, Monday. I'm actually going to go see him tomorrow. He doesn't know Uh it yet. He do, uh, nah, I'm going to show, show up on his porch. <laughs> <laughs> I can ask him to build a snowman. Yeah, I will. That's exactly Perfect. what I'll do. I want, I want GoPro footage of that. <laughs> no problem. Later, man. <laughs> see you, Osbo. You're the best. Later. Man, and we'll Thank see you. you. Uh, Have see a good you night, bro. Beach. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. All right. Bye. You never call me anymore. Come out that door. <laughs> it's, done, it's done, gone away. We used to be best buddies, and now we're, we're not. not. Why don't you tell me why? why? 
God, Osmo was a dickhead. This was I the worst believe. call ever. Like, the, if this was a musical, this would be. Uh, what's it called? That annoying burning? musical. Burning? No, dude. <laughs> a burning Cats. the musical. Cat no, Cat. freaking. I, I hate I can always forget the names. Uh, La Miserable. Well, I don't know what that is. La Miserable. Les Miserables. The, if this was a musical, this would be La Miserable. Well, huh? luckily, the the stupid Frederick Osbo guy doesn't know what kind of shirt I'm wearing because I'm, I'm showing my colors over here. I'm wearing a Team Forsberg shirt. April's Fool. What do you think? A fool do, Osbo. You will learn your... your well, you'll learn your lesson tomorrow. I'll, I'll show you what for. Yeah, dude. dude I don't care. That's it. Shit. This I, socialist bullshit he'd throw uh, at us. I'm just going to move to Norway, actually. If, <laughs> yeah. if that's at all possible, because if, like you said, Paco, everyone's got like really stacked up, sweet, vintage, like drift cars that have sick and build, sick it, builds, and not, they've got they've got gate bill. That, that's one well, of the things, dude. Like, I'm like, since I have a minivan. And it's like that just Paco, we know you have a minivan. Like, well, Jesus, just get that. I'm, 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 I'm setting up my, my premise. Okay, let's hear it. So since I have like probably the stupidest vehicle here. And excess money. I actually have a lot of uh, contact with all these people from Gadbill. Because they've have got weird cars. The most yeah. Am- no, yeah. The, but they're <laughs> the most amazing builds. They have like <laughs> oh, God. A, like American muscle hybrids with Japanese suspension and Volk wheels. Yeah. We, they have How's your guys' conversation go? They're speaking to you in Norwegian. You're speaking back in Spanish. Spanish. <laughs> yeah. Just like, what is going on? You can't on? imagine the shit well, show it is. Well, think about Osbo. He goes out to Got Bill, right? Picture this. He goes out to Got Bill. He's wearing his Rockstar t-shirt. He's walking through the pits. And then everybody's like, oh, Osbo's not driving this year. What a prima donna. Osbo, why are you not driving this year? He's not going to tell him I got a speeding ticket. I've been banned from driving. I can't believe so that. So what's it's his so answer? Insane. He's going to be like, oh, well... I've, I'm, I didn't get much sleep last night. I'm a movie star. I'm now. a movie star. I've seen Morning One and Two, and mm-hmm. uh, you know I, I didn't eat breakfast this morning, so I'm sleepy. My still. foot is all sleep. My foot sleep. It's asleep <laughs> right now. I can barely walk. Yeah. So how do you think those conversations went? I really, I really, I just almost lost it internally again because of Steve and mommy, daddy kisses. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was wait. I knew you had a good one because you were just like because I was, I was just waiting for like a, a moment to to talk, and it's like, oh, I gotta throw out Steve and mommy, daddy kisses. <laughs> <laughs> and and it worked. It paid off for me, <laughs> <laughs> except for I couldn't deliver it without laughing. That was rough. But uh, but Stephen Stephen mommy daddy kisses. I remember reading about that guy <laughs> in Sport Compact I got Car. A... Well, I remember reading about him in like Sport Compact Car, like in the night. Like this is probably what early two thousands. Like he's been he's been yeah, a he big, was a legend. It was like a Honda. He was doing drag guy? racing shit, right? Yeah, Stephen Fapolaticus was. Uh, let was, let I think so, it was Hondas. So, so, it was into Hondas. I think so. I don't it was care. some front wheel drive oh, wow. racing, okay. but. I thought he had like some drag race stuff. Yeah, he was the drag racing master. Like he was the dude to be. He's as like. Much, uh, uh, here's the thing: as much shit as people throw in a Hondas when they're put together you're the properly. Only one about, they, I love Hondas. Hondas are great. Well, yeah, uh, we even have we even have Jared. Jared was in a Honda Civic once, like doing all kinds of. Well, that was like the mayhem. first import. I'm gonna steal my mom's S2000 someday. Like it will be mine, and I'm gonna just I'm just gonna throw some T37s on it, some bronze th- ones, and then I'm gonna maybe lower it like an inch and put like an exhaust and yeah, call it S- a day. Yeah, but S2000s to me they don't count as Hondas. Why? Because they're awesome. They're because they're rear wheel drive. Mm. Well, you're talking when you, it's funny. Everybody said like, well, I drive a Honda. They don't tell you if it's a Civic and a Cord or a, even an Integra, which is an. It, Actually, uh, explain a, that to me. <laughs> explain that Honda it's fans. Actually, an Acura. Yeah, and they said, oh, it was a Honda. You know what's weird about the that whole just, the whole Acura Honda thing is the fact that they seem like two, two like full car brands. Like they both have like their entry level, they both have like their their luxury level, they both have like their big sedans. Imagine like Japan, like they're just two of everything under Honda. So it's like you had you could buy an Integra and a two door Civic at the same time. They're like, I think the, the Integra is still a little bit higher. Yeah, I mean Civic. it was considered a little bit a little bit better, I guess. But I I just want to see the preludes come back. Preludes are cool. The prelude needs to come back. The CRX needs to no more CRZ needs to be a CRX. Yeah, they they really screwed that car up. It's like it's so disappointing that 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 car could have been awesome. I've seen them at drag strips where they actually swap the whole hybrid bullshit and they just put like a regular B engine, like yeah. a B twenty. And well, it could have been a cool car if they if they just gave it more than like ninety horsepower. I think it looks cool as fuck. Yeah, I think it's it looks just, cool. It's just slow. It's like zero to sixty in like what nine or eleven seconds or something. It's they, ridiculous. They well, got to give them that. That's the first uh, hybrid with a manual transmission. Yeah, so that was cool. It's just was cool. it was just too weird. Like they they had the wrong focus. I think but during they, those years they have no premium interior though. No leather available. I remember my sister was uh, in the that's that's more the original CRX 
style, I guess. You didn't have I, options. I, I guess, but it, it, but it wasn't a cheap car. Yeah. So being not a cheap car and not having that premium option. Yeah, and that's the other thing, weird. too. It was like $30,000. So Where the like CR, th you can get a Civic SI with full leather. Which they are. They're bringing, they're bringing that, that back, right? Cool car. Or not the SI. They're bringing, up, uh, they're bringing Type R to America. Oh, maybe. They never made it here. Yeah. Well, they made Integra Type R's. You could buy an Integra Type R. Do you know what nope. you guys yes, need? Yes, you could. Mother Listen, do you know what you guys need while you're having this conversation? That was, a, that was an is White Oakley sunglasses, some vapes, and a backwards <laughs> Dude, hat. And see? this will make this conversation way more interesting. Did you see my vape Snapchats the other day? <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't. It was hilarious. I didn't see them. You uh, couldn't even hold the your left. I know, because because I was I was Alex, my roommate, was playing some uh, some music in here in the living room with uh with his bandmates. They do kind of like eclectic. Um, like chill, their their name's Led chill. Zeppelin. We're gonna give them a quick plug. They call Chill Bro, and then oh, they nice. and so they're like doing like kind of like weedly weedly music. And I grabbed Alex's <laughs> vape and pulled out Snapchat, and I just like did like a huge. I tried to make a huge cloud, but I took like a big rip and did the vape life thing, and then like coughed immediately. And <laughs> so you know the vape life sign. Then you got uh, then you got crossed cross vape by Alex and is John there Landy. Vape life sign? There you go. That looks like you're from Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Las Vegas, baby. Then you got you got cross cross vape by John Landy. Yeah. How did, how did you feel after the vape, Alex? Like, that that should fuck you up, didn't it? <laughs> you got ripped. Got ripped. <laughs> what else about uh, Osbo? So Osbo said that he would he would he would sandbag people if it's competition. Do you know what? I, I've been appreciating a lot more different mindsets. You know, Chris is like the clean cut Japanese mm. purist, like. Let's just let's let's go out there and put on a show and entertain. But as Osbo said when he first got on the phone, it's like this is war. I'm gonna do whatever it yeah. takes. Screw everybody. It's not just entertainment. It's a race. And he has that mindset, and I can respect that. So yeah. it's like it puts me. Which in, is it's cool to, to yeah. actually see though that 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 like people like Turk. Turk's like, no, I'm gonna drive fucking 100 percent balls out every time, no matter what. And and Osbo's like, no, I'm there to win. Like, and both are right. I guess it's just yeah. yeah own to their own i guess he's well, throwing some throwing some style which 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 i guess people have complained as he had said that he would he was misbehaving somehow i guess with uh with throwing out that that turbulence i don't know for lack of a better term <laughs> turbulence uh, that was a good that was a good not a bad one i don't know yeah. Actually, don't he, just, he just wasn't i guess it, that wasn't obvious at all for the people who's watching but for the drivers who are behind him they were like kind of like they could feel like the throw well know, yeah it, it's it's like what he said is like you know you if you drive the same run all night and then people know how you drive yep. so he's saying like he's intentionally driving different lines during different runs and you know it's not illegal to drive differently over two runs which is which is funny because that totally sounds like some shit out of initial d oh i've been watching you he's run changing his style <laughs> he's yeah. changing his style on me right now yeah. it's about to become a i haven't even seen his final form yet yeah, exactly <laughs> um so guys before we go um Little thing right here. Wake me up before you go, girl. Before we coco. Um, so a lot of people keep telling us, oh, are you guys going to be talking about only about Formula Drift? Uh, no one said like, that to me. It's like, nope. We're not going to talk only about Formula Drift. Well, that's, all, we, that's and, all I know. I don't know. And Well, yeah, obviously. A.K.A. Drift Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> he's good. He's leaving. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Sam just quit the podcast, guys. Uh, he he called himself that, you know. Yeah. Was, anyways, so Sam, you might want to hear this. Uh, put, put put your cans back. Oh, on. Sam's back. <laughs> Sam, are you alright? Can't hear anything. Oh, oh my go. God. Oh, he's back. back. Can't hear anything go. without my headphones on. So um, yeah, we're gonna be talking about a lot more older series. We're gonna be talking about grassroots. We're gonna be talking about pro ams. It's just that are, we are wanted we, we wanted know. to. This is news to me. We wanted to cover everything Formula Drift because the season's about to start. I well, not only yeah, not only that. Just to t is, if you guys want something, chime in and say it. Yeah, oh, like, like that's the big part of this. Is you know we have guys in FD that are reaching out to us, talking about their programs, kind of explaining what they're doing. And if you guys want any type of information out there, or talk about new series, or talk about what people what you guys are doing. Comment and talk to us. But we are going to primarily be an FD league because we are we do live in America. It is the premier drifting league. So like yeah, it's going to be something that we talk about most of the well, drifting time. That brings to something that I wanted to talk about on oh the God. next on the next episode. Okay, but uh -oh. just so you guys know, Let's hear um, there's this new series coming. It's called Street League Drift. Oh Everybody's God. been chiming about like the whole what would the, these drivers do if everybody drifts on a very similar car. Oh my God. So. I don't know uh, if you guys are familiar with Nick Swan from yeah. Midwest Rift. Nick's a good guy. I know Nick Duckling. Nick Duckling? Who's Dick? This one's a swan. Who's Dick Swan? He's beautiful. <laughs> with the, this I know Nick very feathers. well. Feathers. Nick is a good so. guy. Okay, so Corey he has knows a nice Nick. beard. 
So they're starting this new. It's called the Street League Drift. And they pay people five thousand dollars if they win. They actually have uh, good prices. Okay. And like the whole idea is, uh, the vehicles are gonna be under serious. They have to be literally street legal cars. Really, I didn't know that. That's cool. And it's gonna have like they they have a good list of of rules. If you if you want to go onto the Facebooks and their websites and wait, but just street look- legal as in like the way that. Oh, so, what, so so I know a guy who has like a Deborah X or whatever, and his <laughs> he doesn't have like a cat on that car, like street legal. Well, as in like, do they have to actually pass emissions? You know what I could do is I can go register the boss in Maricopa and get a license plate and then trailer it or even drive it out. Yeah, to Turk's street is. car is still street legal. Well, ish. My buddy Nick it's still registered. My my good buddy Nick Swan thought about little thugs like you two. Well, oh, what we're we're so, shitheads. Yeah, as I say, because how. So, there's a rule book written where it, it specifies exactly what you can and what you can do regardless of what... Okay, so it doesn't actually have to pass emissions in your state. It just is a resembling a streetcar. I'm you not can't... exactly sure about the emissions part, yeah. but like there, it literally says that like you can have power adders. Lightly modified cars, though, exactly is the idea. Exactly, light modified. I think they have to have a pretty much like a decent interior. Not now sure if it's now that everyone's interior. already chopped up their cars and thrown out their interiors, <laughs> yeah. it's like, oh... Well, well. But, but that's the thing. Like I, I think this is going to bring a lot of new drivers or even no, sorry uh, a lot of uh, uh, existing drivers who are all used That's to like, cool the big cars well, well they're gonna they're gonna be like you know what i'm just gonna buy me this stock car do some light mods and go and rip on these new let's, series let's talk about this for a second paco okay didn't we have a conversation similar to this probably about a year ago yes in your buddy 8-Bit Brian uh-huh. was asking about, hey, uh, should I keep the Miata stock and run in the Top Drift stock series, or should I? Like, it, this has been a topic for the past year and a half. Yes. And what happened to Top Drift? What happened to their series? Do you remember? I didn't even think that's, anything happened with it. Well, they're still going just around no, but I, but, prime, right? But, like, well, don't you they, remember? They, they, we they had never the, came up with the actual... Well, I, they were going to do it, you those, remember? Yeah, exactly. So, so what happened? I haven't heard anything. Oh, well, uh, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I, I, Corey, that sounds like a bad thing. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out because Top Drift tried it. I just don't know. Well, like I maybe don't, different I don't regions think have they different they tried rules it or not. The thing is, like I'm, I think now they did we have these. It's gonna be like a complete new thing. They Midwest have Drift. By the way, Midwest Drift Union is probably one of the best drifting organizations. Holy shit! <laughs> you hold on, Paco. Did you come up with this yourself? I just looked at the Instagram. Ask Bo. Yes. Your questions. Yeah. That's like, that's really good. This is like something that Corey and I came up with. A couple of years ago, yeah. Actually, Frederick last Askbo. Year. Yeah, yeah, Askbo. Askbo. Sorry. Anyways, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for acknowledging our genius. Anyways, um, so yeah, like so, Nick is is putting together something pretty cool. I think we should talk to him in a couple more uh, episodes. Since le- next episode we're gonna be pretty busy, we still don't want to spill the beans. What's going on in the next episode? Uh, but you guys don't want. We're not going to spill any beans, but we have. We're going to be in Long Beach, and we may have a individual that is familiar with drifting come. I think he knows a little bit. Come about on the drifting. show. Come on the show with us uh, in person. So, but uh, but yeah, I think we should talk to him on the phone one of these days. He's got to give us like a full. Sp- uh, what's it called a uh, full Monty. scoop? A full <laughs> a full scoop of what's going on. Full ice cream scoop of going on. Yes, <laughs> and uh, don't want to take too much more of your time because we're already at an one hour and forty four minutes. No, we're not. That's that's thing. that's with some bonus time. God damn yeah, it. that's with like ten minutes. We're All we're right. good in the time zone. We can just keep on we're good. talking. We can keep, keep going. I forgot to forever. mention uh, in the in the beginning of the show that I also made a video about my love for Taylor Swift earlier oh. on in the week. Yeah, was that what? Tell us about it. Why did you put Avril Lavigne in them? <laughs> that was so. <laughs> so I woke up. I woke up on on Friday. After after hanging out with uh, Jason from Engineering Explained, it's like, all right, well, that guy's a really motivated YouTuber. Like, I got to do something really stupid for April Fool's. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, uh, it wouldn't be really funny if I if I talked about loving Taylor Swift and then I played an Avril Lavigne song. And then and then the, the, the rest of it just came <laughs> from there. You know, the funny thing is that I actually, after I was done watching it, I was like, wait a second. That's, that, was, yeah, that wasn't even a, Cause I think that a lot Taylor of people, Swift song. for me, the primary humor in that whole thing was... Was the actual Avril Lavigne song playing? <laughs> it wasn't me photoshopping myself in photos of Taylor Swift. That was that was an afterthought. For me, it was just just confusing the two. I, <laughs> I saw you use one. I, of my I could photos. appreciate that. Yeah, I used one that of was, Paco's photos of me eating was, pizza and made it look like I was eating Taylor Swift. Because pizza. you because you had nice. me at first like 
Sam's an idiot. He's playing Avril Lavigne. <laughs> and then I'm like, wait, this is Sam. Yeah, this that's, is, that was so everything, everything goes. Yeah, this and then is we on had, purpose. And then we had Corey at the end because I totally remembered as a bonus when I did uh, when I shot Drift Busters with Corey and Matt Powers uh, that we <laughs> on the so so just for as a quick behind the scenes that entire thing was more or less just a like sitting and having a beer idea with with Corey. <laughs> And it's like, oh, Matt's going to be down here. Let's make, let's make some fucking video with it. And then, yep. then we're like, oh, let's just drift a bunch of cars, I guess, at Bondurant. And literally, now, now that I go and I work on these real productions where they plan everything, it's like we just at Bondurant are like, all right, what car should we drift next? Like, well, I don't know. Bring that Tahoe over here. Like, we didn't really have a plan. And then we didn't have a script either. And then we were sitting in front of the Chevy Sonic and, and Matt Powers was like looking oh, at his Snapchat. Well, do you remember? I, okay. I remember the concept now behind this. Yeah. So, uh, do you remember it was like, uh, we were talking about like, so how, how are we going to roll into each car? So we're like, why don't we give, we pretend messages from people. Yeah, saying, exactly. Saying, uh, Conrad Grunwald yeah, asked, how he, do I drift a car? He chimed in. Yeah. So it was like, uh, Oh yeah. We didn't have any pre-planning yeah. with that. And then, and then it worked out. Yeah. It, it's one of your, still one of your best ones on your channel. Except for, except for I didn't know how to adjust audio levels at the time. And anyone that has headphones that listens to it, I have ear bleeding problems. You, but one you, of my favorite. Do you guys before you go? Do you, you guys think you actually coined the whole science meme before Breaking Bad? No, I, I, I stole it from. I stole you? it from Adventure Time. Oh, did you? Yeah, I stole it from Adventure Time because I think because like uh, they hold like they did the high five and they say mathematical. <laughs> Math. Yep. So I, I kind of just took. How that. long has Adventure Time been around for? It's been around for a while. Been a couple, couple of years already. Like at least. Six, but I think, I think oh, I never see. I, I think like your whole like science with the big science mm -hmm. thing. Came I thought that was something we just made up on our own. I didn't think I. I'm gonna science Jeff, the shit out of before J C Pinkman's science bitch. Yeah, that may have come what out. Thing? Yeah, I may have. I may have beaten Breaking Bad, and they probably stole the idea from from Driftbusters. Mm, they definitely guess. have. I think we were the pinnacles on that because we wanted a shot that was funny, wide angle, but like awkwardly uncomfortable. Yep, high fives, hugging, you name it. You and I remember it. Matt was like. This is kind of weird. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> before before Matt Powers really knew that I was a weird asshole, he was like, I don't know about this whole high-fiving and jumping in the air and yelling science, Sam. This sounds pretty stupid. <laughs> Which Matt, you'd think he's like he's like the real weirdest guy, but he's he's pretty like down-tempo, low-key guy when you're just hanging Vegan out with him. Vegan powers activate. Matt yeah. actually got really mad at me one night. Me and Dustin and Matt <clears throat> went out to like a Mellow Mushroom to grab pizza. Mm -hmm. I was there. I was... Yeah, do you yeah. remember that? Yeah, okay. And uh, so Dustin is acting a fool like... Like shooting the shit with the bartenders and running around and dancing and things like that. And uh, these these girls come up and talk to Matt. And Dustin goes... <laughs> Dustin blew it. No, this. Dustin goes, oh, you guys know Matt. Matt, show him your face. Show him how pretty... Show him your face, Matt. And Matt's like, what the fuck are you talking about? What do you mean, show him my face? No, show him <laughs> how pretty you are. Show him your face. And so uh, after the girls got kind of awkward around Matt, they walked away and uh, Matt goes... Just to let you guys know, the cameras are not on you 24-7, so you don't have to act like <laughs> idiots all the time. <laughs> like, and then, but but then the thing is that you act like an idiot all the time. No yeah, so, what, like, but that was our first experience yeah. hanging out with Matt, and ever since then, Matt totally gets it now, and like we're we're best <laughs> best buds, but still. It but was, he didn't uh, realize, he thought you were putting on a show for people, and then he didn't realize that you're just an asshole. At all heart. the time. Like, all the time. This, this is no show, it's just Corey is an asshole, and this is his life. Hey, show him, show him your face. I bet if you post that on his timeline, he'd be like, oh, my show fucking him your God. Face. Oh, yeah. So if everyone wants to ask Matt, Matt Powers to show him your face, <laughs> show, yeah. show him, show, show you his face. I guess. Yeah, there we go. Uh, let's, let's leave. Um, before we go. I've, gotta go. I've got to pack for Long Beach. Yes. Still. Before we go, guys, uh, again, if you like what you're listening or watching, remember, we rely on you. We don't buy followers. We're not that kind of. Yeah, share the show. Yeah, share share with share your mom. Share it with your teacher. Share it with your your, your psychiatrist. Dogs, your dog. Children. Your dog psychiatrist. Uh, Just comment tell, on tell, it. Subscribe. Tell your friends. Yeah, tell your friends how how much you like this shit. Or how much friends, you hate it. It doesn't matter. If tell you talk your friends shit. how fucking stupid Corey looks right now. And just so you guys know, on our Facebook, on our, sorry, not on Facebook, on our website actually, on where we publish the episode and all that, there's actually like a Facebook comment thing. So you can actually Ooh. leave a comment right there on our page without even like having to log in or everything. It's just like an automatic Facebook thing. Hot diggity dog. Yeah. We just the more you interact, the more things we can try to help you guys out maximum with. maximum drift cast you get. In well, the meantime, we're going to keep making shit up. Yep, keep making stuff up. None of what we say is true. Thanks for listening. I'll see y'all in the Long Beach. Wait for the new special episode. It's going to be awesome. And see